for that music. I have been working for months and months and months to get all of these instruments here. Oh, they have obliged me. I did see Byron is not sitting up here. Yeah. For those of you who had not heard, he said he got his out and all he could do is honk on it. And so he just was going to save that for home, I guess, rather than church. But thank you, instrumentalists, for, for bringing your instruments that add yes. so much. And I've certainly enjoyed even the prelude. And we welcome you into this service tonight. So good to see. Let's see, Sherry, son, Edward, welcome. Glad that he's here tonight. So good to have the Wagners here. <clears throat> Always grateful when they can be here. And we're just delighted that you're here in the service tonight. Now, I want to ask for a show of hands right here at the beginning. How many of you grew up going to camp meeting? Let me see your hand. You grew up going to camp meeting. All right, wonderful. Well, I uh, thought some time ago it would be great to have some camp meeting emphasis. And uh, so I just decided to uh, do some camp meeting emphasis on the Sunday nights in July. And I am looking forward to this. Yes. Now, <clears throat> I know I planned it, so I know everybody can get excited about the things they plan. But I, I hope that you will join me in that and being excited about it. But, uh, but having said all of that, we know that programs don't bring God's presence. And I, I want this to be more than just a series of services. I want God to come and move among us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we like camp meeting preaching. We like camp meeting singing. We like all of those sorts of things. But nothing replaces the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so we are vitally interested in Him coming and doing His work among us. And some of you will, will go back a ways to camp meeting time that I can't go back to. And your mind's going to go back to sawdust floors and... And uh, that sort of thing that I don't have memories of, really. But I'm, I'm glad to have a camp meeting emphasis with air conditioner. Am I alone with that? <laughs> oh, I'm so very, very grateful that, that you're here in the service tonight. Let's stand together. Let's invite the presence of the Lord. And as we pray together, you on purpose, individually, ask the Lord to do his work in your heart in this service tonight. Father, what a joy it is to be in your house tonight. We thank you for every heart that has gathered into the sanctuary. You know every need that's represented here. Lord, we know that all is vain unless you are here. All is vain. And so, Lord, we're asking that you would come in your own gentle way and saturate this service with your presence. Give us eyes to see, as Francis has talked about this week in Vacation Bible School. Give us ears to hear. Give us minds to understand and hearts to obey. Lord, we're just asking that you would do your work in our midst tonight. And may you get all the glory tonight out of what's said and done. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Let's join in the scene. Brother Wagner, come and lead us at this time. There's more with us than me with the world.
few minutes ago about commitment. We come into the evening service tonight and we sing about commitment. What you sang about tonight requires a decision. And I'm so thankful that we can make that decision and follow Christ. Glory to His name. And I'm thankful for what He did on Calvary and what He's done in my heart and what He's done in your hearts and lives. And you sang about it tonight and you did a wonderful job. Thank you for your singing. Thank you, Brother Wagner, for leading us tonight. Yes, Tim. to remember. We mentioned them this morning, and if you would remember some of those, but we want to remember Brother Sankey tonight as he is facing physical challenges, and Sister Sankey as she is caring for him, let's pray that God would be with them, come alongside them, and give them the grace and the strength and the help that they need through this trial. Let's pray for the Sankeys tonight. Let's remember uh, Weston. This is Stanley's great-grandson. Let's pray that Weston would receive a touch from the Lord tonight, and we failed to mention that this morning, but we want to remember Weston tonight. We want to remember the Lawson family and David Lawson as he is going to be having a procedure soon. Let's pray that God would be with him tonight. Let's remember Tim Sudlasak as he's looking for a job that God would provide for him. Kim Staley is sick. Brother Winkler is facing some physical challenges. Let's pray for these requests. We also want to remember Brother Chris Cravens, who is in, in the hospital, he is in critical condition, but he is stable in ICU. And let's pray that God would be with the Cravens family. Let's stand as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight. So I, I yes. Have a friend who has a special week in the morning for her family. She called next. Okay. Sister Stetler has a special request that needs urgent prayer. We're going to have a situation in the morning. And let's pray for that request as well. Brother Southern will lead us in to hear the church body lift in prayer and take our requests to God. It is so encouraging that we get to do that as a church body. At this time, the Wagners are going to bless us in a couple songs.
Savior. Yes. I remember it was on a Sunday morning. <laughs> on that side of the church, I knelt at the pew, the backslid and holding his boy. And Jesus saved my soul. I'm so glad for the difference he makes, aren't you? Yeah. Amen. I got my tongue tumbled on that one verse. You ever had that problem when you get I, I was just singing. Well, this is totally off the subject, and it's not a can't meeting story, okay? But I was singing in a wedding one time. We were singing that song, Sunrise, Sunset. You ever heard that song? Well, I, I sang it, Sunrise, Sun Sweat. <laughs> so that wasn't as bad as messing up somebody's wedding. But the truth remains, I'm so thankful for that Sunday morning when Jesus saved me. I'm glad for the difference he makes in my life. It's a good way. It's a good way. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what some people go through who don't have it. But the difference he makes, the peace that he gives, oh, what a wonderful thing it is. I like this old, old song. We're old people. We like to sing old songs. It says, it's different now since Jesus saved my soul.
these instruments. My, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, you'd have to go a long ways to find a better camp meeting song leading than yes. Brother Keith White does. And so good to have them. I, I was talking to Keith a while ago before service. And <clears throat> and I'm, I'm going to tell this. I might should have. But uh, they're, they're going to be married 48 years next week. Yes, sir. And uh, they got married on my birthday. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's the reason they chose that day. <laughs> and uh, he said, now, yeah, you, we got married on your birthday. He said, let's see, you'll be 78 next week. <laughs> now, I'm told that because I've got two sisters in the service. I knew with enjoy it. <laughs> so, no, sir, I'll be 68 next week. So. <laughs> So good to have you. We're going to take the offering. <clears throat> this is designated missions offering. So if you have a missions pledge, uh, please, uh, this is a good time to put it in if you had pledged monthly for that. And uh, Brother Stroud has asked Sister Wagner to play her accordion for the offertory. And I'm looking forward to that. She kind of started my granddaughter down the road to playing an accordion. And uh, Brookie is just not, the granddaughters are here, but one lives up in Ohio. And uh, she's just doing well with it. We look forward to the offertory as well. The ushers will come, and we'll receive the Sunday evening.
say amen. amen. I was going to play an accordion. I was going to play just like that. I also wouldn't want to arm wrestle her with my left hand. <laughs> Have you tried it? Uh, don't try it. I won't try it. She gets a lot of exercise on that left arm. And, uh, oh, that was very, very beautiful. Thank you for that music. Thank you for your giving. Well, let me mention just a couple of announcements uh, to you. Don't forget regular services this week, regular service times, kind of back to regularly <coughs> scheduled programming after Vacation Bible School. But uh, don't forget prayer meeting this coming Wednesday night, and our intern will be speaking again. So you want to be here for that. Well, let's, let's remember that service, and then regular Sunday services next week. And, of course, can't meet an emphasis on each of those Sunday nights. This coming Sunday night, the Loper will be sharing. We look forward to his ministry. The 16th, we have Matt and Joy Barnett coming. The 23rd, we have Brother James Sutherland uh, scheduled to speak. Looking forward to that. And then the 30th, Brother Roland Mitchell will be here. And uh, so we're looking forward to these services. But as I've alluded to, it's, it's, it's his presence that makes all the difference. And we're we're kind of excited about the program, but, but uh, we're just interested in the Lord doing his work. And so let's, let's be much in prayer for, for these services. Let me also mention July the 14th is a youth get-together, and that will be at 6 o'clock. And this is going to be a combination uh, Chambersburg God's Missionary Church. Uh, Terry Yoder is the assistant pastor slash youth pastor uh, out there where Jeff Stratton is pastoring. They're bringing a group of young people out this direction to go to the Ark Encounter. So they thought it would be great if our youth groups could get together. So we have we have uh, combined that effort. And July 14th, 6 o'clock, games, pizza, all that kind of stuff here on the property. 6 o'clock, July 14th. And then the 16th, baptismal service. If you're interested in being baptized, uh, you can see me at some point uh, between now and then. And we'll, we'll work work through what we need to work through, but just keep that in mind. Let me also mention that uh, Brother uh, brother Scott mentioned this this morning, but uh, the, the e-bulletin that we have here at the church, and I, I just want to say a special thanks to Brother Tim Wilson again. He does such an outstanding job. He makes God look good. Um, he makes our church look good, and whatever he does is just very professional, and uh, I, I want him to know how much I appreciate it. But that e-bulletin is something that if you do not have, you need to get something very, very uh, helpful. If you need to know something what's going on, a time, uh, that an event is scheduled, um, all sorts of things. And birthdays and anniversaries, prayer requests. You know, we always have our phone with us. You may not always have the paper bulletin. But if you're waiting on somebody in the hospital or you're waiting in your wife in the emergency room or, or whatever, all kinds of times that you'll have a little bit of time on your hand, and you can just pull that out and pull up the prayer request and pray for those prayer requests. Just a wonderful opportunity to be able to share one another's needs with the Lord. It's right there at your hand tips, fingertips, all right? Care and connect groups just uh, were passed out. The new groups were passed out today. And uh, let's see here. Michelle Witt has kind of taken that on as an assignment. And uh, Brother Tim Wilson has put it into a document that is right at your fingertips again. So I would encourage you um, sometime real soon, maybe in another service, I'll have you pull it out and do it right then. I won't make you do it right now, but all of the groups are up and running. And this is for July through September. And uh, we, we are not asking that this be a burden on your shoulder. This is just... An avenue, an outlet where you can minister to those in your group. And I had someone just tell me recently that basically all they do is send a text and let their group know that they're praying for them. And really, that's all I'm asking. That's, I mean, that's very, very minimum. You could do way more than that. You could get with your group and say, hey, when would be a good time for us all to go out to eat? Or when can we share a meal together? Or bring them a plate of cookies. A lot of ways that you can just reach out to them, let them know that you care for them. And, uh, and so those groups are up and running July through September. So I encourage you to take a look at, at those and find out who's in your group and make an effort. And I know that we all get busy and, and, and everybody's a little unique. And some people say, I've got to give it 100% or I don't want to be involved at all. And I know that there are different personalities that, that relate to things that way. But if there's a, if there's a time frame of, of three months where you weren't able to do it for somebody else, let somebody else do it for you. And then the next time you, you get involved to do it for somebody else, again, I, I'm not at all wanting this to be a heavy version of, oh, no, it's a kid. No, just put it, on your, put it on your prayer list 
And, uh, and when it hits you, just send a quick text. I'm praying for you. And you'd be surprised what kind of blessing that will be. And so I encourage you to do that. All right, one other announcement I need to make, and I'll get out of the way, but Patty has asked me to ask, or had, has asked me to announce that there's going to be a group of people that are going to enjoy the Florence fireworks tomorrow night at the J.C. Penney parking lot in Florence. The Florence Mall, I think most of you are aware where that's at. They have a firework display. If you're interested in going, it's just open up to our church people. As many people want to come, bring your chairs, snacks, have a good time of fellowship, and then the, yes, Patty? That's the upstairs entrance. The upstairs entrance of J.C. Penney, all right? So uh, just, just head up that direction. Do you have a time frame of when that is? All right, so she's going to be there about nine-ish. Then you can uh, just try to look around and find people you know and begin to, to connect together and have a wonderful time of fellowship and encourage you to participate in that. All right, well, it's a joy to have Brother Stetler to share the message with us tonight. And uh, I have mentioned to these that this is camp meeting emphasis, and so I want camp meeting preaching, whatever that looks like. I know that not every camp meeting preacher is the same. Not every camp meeting message is the same. But I just want these that are preaching in these services to mind the Lord. And I know that Brother Darrell is going to do that. So we look forward to his ministry in just a few moments. Before he preaches, the Wagners are going to sing one more time. The Lord bless them as they minister in song. After which, Pastor Stepman will bring us the evening message. Let's just open our hearts, open our minds, allow God to, to work in them and accomplish his plans. Thank you so much for inviting us to be here tonight. It is a privilege to be here at the Burlington. Church, we love you guys. I enjoy just coming here and sitting back and just soaking in and, and then eating some good food. <laughs> well, I come in for the, the, the Stellars are so They're just wonderful people. You know? they, they always invite us to eat lunch with them. We, we, we appreciate that so much. I love camp meeting, don't you? We were at camp meeting last week. I like good accordion playing. You like what, what? We were at camp meeting last week and Sharon was up there playing. And I, and I got to thinking. You know, I can kind of relate to that accordion. She knows how to press my buttons. She knows how to play my keys. She knows how to put me in a squeeze. And she smiles the whole time. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I love, I love her play. 48 years this year. Brother Daryl. 48. And uh, Daryl and Regina, they were back in school. They were Daryl and Regina. They remember... Uh, we were one of the most unlikely couples <laughs> on campus. I came as a sophomore in high school, and I was very short. I, I really was, and there were this. I was very short, like I was very short. And between my junior and my, no, I was a sophomore, as so a junior. And between my junior and senior year of high school, I just shot up. Sharon, on the other hand, was in college. She is a few years older than me. She was in college. She sang in the ladies' trio, very popular on campus. I was not a real popular guy. I was just, a, you know, no one really put us together. There's a story, but the Lord worked it. There's a story. Someday I'll tell that. But it's been 48 years, so it's worked, Virginia. Thank the Lord. But God is joining together. Let not man put us on. Amen. It's so good tonight to be a child of the King. This is another old song. I love this song. Praise God. Praise God. Amen.
Wagners. And uh, I can tell you this, God had a big old providence at work when they put, the, put he put them together. And uh, I guess we all look back to those days and kind of stand amazed. Uh, this will be my 50 year anniversary from GBS uh, graduating. From high school, that is. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> look back with great, great memories. Keith and Sharon have done the camp meeting circuit as my wife and I have. But I, we were talking the other day. We just finished the camp last Sunday night in West Virginia that we were at 37 years ago first, the first time. And uh, they've got a history book of that camp meeting. It's 66 years old. I think this was the 66th camp meeting. They put together a history book, and the picture they put on the front of that, uh, Darley and Marilee are the little kids sitting down at the front of the crowd. <laughs> and Sherilyn was a baby in arms, and uh, 37 years ago. And uh, how old are you? 38. 38, so she was a year old. And uh, But uh, we, we started, we've been married 47 years next week, and the first year we were married, I believe it was the first year, maybe it was the second, maybe it was the second first year, uh, we sang for Camargo Camp out here on the east side of Cincinnati, the first camp we've had, and I don't think we've had a summer since that we didn't participate in the camp. And uh, this summer we're in five camps, and one of these days, Brother Keith, I'm going to sit down and count up how many camps we, we participated in. I don't know, I, I know it's been uh, 47 years, and many, many, especially our years of traveling, uh, it was far more than that, than one a year, and uh, this year we're, we're in five camps, so uh, so anyway, it's been a pleasure. You say, well, why do, why do we still have camps? Well, <clears throat> let me ask you this, why do you still take a bath? <laughs> You know, camps are a good way to wash off the ever-accumulating residue of a sinful world. Because the devil tries to stick it to us, doesn't he? And it's a good time to shake ourselves and let the washing of the Word and work of the Spirit to make sure things that maybe accumulate a little taken care of. Barnacles, spiritual barnacles of life. And... Uh, why do you take a drink every day? <laughs> because you can't take a drink today the last week. Right? That's true. That's right. And, uh, and, and camp meetings are a good time for a refreshing spiritual drink. And so I, I thank you, Brother Stroud, for this emphasis. And <clears throat> as I look through some old messages, my, I... I pulled this message out and saw that I preached it first in 1981. It's a handwritten message that I hand wrote back in those days. And uh, if, if you could see my handwritten notes, you'd be about as scared as I am right now. <laughs> so, anyway, but uh, I, I, it's what I felt like I felt in my heart. And I felt it for our church. This is what I desire. This is what I desire. After 28 years, this is what I still desire for our church. Isaiah chapter 64, if you have your Bibles. Isaiah chapter 64. <clears throat> I want to begin reading with verse 1. Isaiah 64, <clears throat> verse 1. Isaiah cries, All that thou wouldst rend the heaven." That thou wouldst come down. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God would come down? What difference would it make if God would come down? I want to tell you, that's not, uh, that's not just wishful thinking. God wants to come down. And he says, when God comes down, that the mountains would flow down at thy presence. Changes take place. As when the melting fire burneth. What happens when the fire burneth? Changes take place. It causeth the waters to boil. To make thy name known to thine adversaries. That the nations may tremble at thy presence. 
When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down. The mountains flowed down at thy presence, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou madest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. And those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Or one rendering of that puts that in the question. Shall we be saved? Oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens. You quickly see, and we, we really don't know what Isaiah's emotional state was when he wrote these words. I suppose it could have been a haunting hopelessness. Something that says, can God do it again? I suppose it could have been a wishful plea. Oh God, please come down. I suppose it could have been a frustrating question. Why doesn't God do something? I suppose it could have been a desperate urgency. Lord, if you don't do something, we're in trouble. I suppose it could have been an earnest invitation. I don't know which attitude Isaiah was writing the words in. I think I can put a little bit of all of those in there. Something of an, a haunting hopelessness. Oh, God, look at what's going on. Have you felt that way in your world lately? Look at what's happening. Where are we? What's going on? Maybe a wishful plea. Oh God, please, please step in and make yourself visible. A desperate, urgent, earnest cry. What was going on in Isaiah's world? Well, let's look at it real quickly. I'm not going to dwell here, but... As I look down through the chapter, it's implied in verse 4 there they had failed to wait upon God. It, it would seem to imply that there was such a busyness. There was so much frantic activity, so many earthly pursuits, so much going on. Can you see a parallel in our day? So much going on. Verse 7, there seems to be a, a prayerlessness indicated. None that calleth upon thy name. There, there seemed to be a, a certain self-satisfaction, a, a certain indifference and self-sufficiency. Verse 7, he says, there's none that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. Just kind of relaxed and comfortable. Several times, a couple of times in this passage, he talks about sin. Verse 5, for we have sinned. Verse 7, thou hast consumed us because of our iniquity. You look at the list of what Isaiah says is going on and then look at the, the results of that. I, I see the wrath of God in verse 5. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. I see decay in verse 6. We do all fade as a leaf. Deterioration. What happens when the leaves turn color and they die and they drop off? And then Isaiah says, the wind bloweth them away. There's instability. Friends, I, I want to tell you it's amazing how quickly a deteriorating process can take over and take place in our lives unless somehow every once in a while God steps into our life in a freshening, refreshing way, in a new and special way. That's right. The deterioration, the instability. Thou hast hid thy face from us and consumed us. Divine silence. When you put it all together, you quickly see that Isaiah's prayer is not just for an emotional stirring. It's, it's a stirring cry of desperation. He's not just wanting to shuffle the papers on the, on the desk, so to speak. He's saying, oh God, step down among us and make the mountains shake and make the mountains flow down at thy presence. 
can make the changes that we cannot make. Friend, I want to tell you there's nothing in my in the world that my heart cries out for anymore than a fresh moving of God among us, in our church, among our families. Oh God, we must have every once in a while a fresh moving of God. If we don't see that, if we don't see that, we'll experience some of the same things happen that Isaiah saw happen. It's his presence that makes the difference in the preaching. It's his presence that makes the difference in the singing and the testifying, the praying, the atmosphere when God rends the heavens. God coming down is, is what makes sin look sinful. Was there ever a day when we needed to see that any more than we need it today? Sin to look sinful. Holiness to look attractive. God coming down is what makes holiness look attractive. God coming down is what makes hell seem hot and heaven seem real and truth be piercing and conviction come in a deep way. Pardon and cleansing easy to find. I thought as, as I was trying to say this morning about our own young people that are involved in, in being helpers in VBS and I can tell you this, I'm so proud of our kids at Burlington Bible Church. I'm so grateful to God for them. Our teenagers... I don't think we have a bad apple in the pack. But I want our kids to know a genuine experience of saving grace and a thorough experience of sanctifying fullness. Friend, that will only happen. Our kids will only get that stability in their life and establishment in their life as God comes down every once in a while in a fresh and real way until everybody is aware that God has come down and ripped the heavens. Stepped in among us. If He doesn't come, we become a well-engineered machine. Operating mechanically, a smooth system of religion worked out. I remember years ago going to a museum up in the New Philadelphia, Ohio area. Anybody, I think Pam's from up in that area. You ever been to Warther Museum? Never have. You know it's there? Yes. You ought to go sometime. The Warther Museum is, is the lifelong hobby of a man named Warther. He was a knife maker by trade, I believe, but he was a, a carver by hobby. It's a fascinating, fascinating thing. He, he carved the history of steam, steam engines, from the most primitive steam apparatuses all the way through the last of the steam engines. And, and he hand-carved entire locomotives and cars, a whole train, and it would be displayed up there with moving parts and people sitting on the inside of the, the, plane, uh, the, the train and, and even a swagging rope going out to a bell on the end of the, the locomotive. And it was fascinating, fascinating to see. We were standing there in front of a display, beautiful glass case, lights, accenting, the display and there was a locomotive with the wheels turning and the guy as we were watching all of it hand carved all of it amazing done with hand tools we looked at that locomotive with his turning wheels and the lady said the, the wheels on this train the, the the moving parts are made of a of an imported wood that has a self self oily substance as part of its composition and she said the moving parts of this train have been, the wheels have been turning for 75 years and have never been oiled or greased. I stood there watching a beautiful display and I confess every once in a while my preacher mind takes over and I was thinking and I thought you know if we're not careful that's the way we'll be in our walk with God we'll just be a display piece kind of having a little system worked out and a smoothness about us and wheels turning and going nowhere, doing nothing, just, just kind of going through motions. 
And that's the best way to deteriorate the world is just to go through motions. Right. Every once in a while, your heart needs to be melted. Every once in a while, your spirit needs to be broken. Every once in a while, your tears need to flow. Every once in a while, you need to stop in His presence and know that God has stepped into your life. Don't go too long without sensing His presence. It'll break up the cold formality of your soul and replace it with fervent worship. It'll replace carelessness with carefulness and exchange deadness for, for passion and change an earth consciousness into an awareness of eternal values. It'll replace a love for this world for a deep love for Jesus. It'll preserve our heritage. I believe it's the only thing that will. Our kids are not going to want a, a cold and dead and lifeless something. They're going to want some, some reality, some passion, some heart, some soul. God rending the heavens and coming down. When God rends the heavens, comes down, he begins to rekindle the fires of our heart. You know, maybe I can illustrate this point. Years ago, I was at my first church pastoring and we went from living in Cincinnati, I lived in Cincinnati all my life, but one year till we took our first church in 77. Summer of 77, and we went to a country church. And when I say country, I mean, we don't have any country like that around here. <laughs> it was dirt roads, and we lived 18 miles from Brent, Alabama. Brent, Alabama, in those days, had a Win Dixie grocery store and a Bill's Dollar store. We lived 23 miles from Marion, Alabama. That was our postal address. Never forget moving into Mount Iva, going out of Brent on a state highway, turning off on a smaller blacktop, and off of that onto a smaller blacktop, and off of that onto a wide dirt road, and off of that on a narrow dirt road, and then off of that down through the trees with the trees hanging and it looked like a wagon path. And we came out at the end of that little road, and off of the left was a nice little cemetery and a little country church in the park. It was there that it got country dark. You know, country dark's darker than city dark. You know that. I pulled up to the house before at night. We told the people after we moved there, we said, you think anybody, would, would you have any interest in putting a yard light out here? They said, a yard light? What for? <laughs> they wanted it dark at night. I pull up, coming up to pull onto our carport and turn out the turn out the headlights, and the house disappeared. I mean, literally, you couldn't see anything. All of a sudden, it was dark; you couldn't see a thing. My wife would scream. I did it just for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget that first year. If she had to get up in the night to go to the restroom, I had to go sit on the side of the tub with her while. She <laughs> I mean, literally, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> we had a fireplace in that house. I'd never lived in a house with a fireplace. Fall of the year, I began to rummage around the edge of the woods looking for some wood to try to start a fire in the fireplace. I found some lengths of soft pine. Somebody had cut a pine tree out there in the edge of the woods. I brought that in. I used bushels of newspaper trying to start a fire. I ended up with an old charred piece of soft pine that didn't burn very well. One day a man in the church brought me a load of firewood. Threw it off his truck in the backyard and I thanked him for it. Stacked it along the back of the house. In that pile of firewood, there were some old gnarly looking pieces didn't have any bark on them, just 
almost looked like parts of roots of a tree. I didn't know it. I'd never heard of what that was. I, I was burning big chunks of that wood. I thought it looked like he had just had some scrap wood he threw on the and was given to the preacher. You know. Unbeknownst to me, that wood was lighter pine. I, I was burning big pieces of that lighter pine in my fireplace and I said to my wife one day, I don't know what kind of wood that is, but I'm going to see if he can get me some more of it. It burns really good. Unbeknownst to me, they would pull that lighter pine, the, the loggers and so forth, would pull it out. It was an old virgin pine, part of a stump that had been there for a long time, gone through chemical changes. They told me it had a lot of the chemical components that make up dynamite. And, and they would take those old stumps out of, the, out of the woods. And I've seen tractor trailer loads of lighter pine. And people would buy it. The reason they would, you could split it up real hard. You could split it up and take a little piece of lighter pine and light it with a match. And it would start burning. And people would use that for their kindling to start their fires. He was nice enough to give me several big pieces of lighter pine to make my kindling all winter long to start my fires in my fireplace. The problem was he didn't tell me that's what it was. I didn't know. I didn't know enough to ask. He didn't know I didn't know, so he didn't tell me. One day I, I had started a fire in the fireplace and it had burned down to kind of a bed of coals and I thought what I need is, is a big piece to put on there and let it burn slow all day long. And I went out and there was a big piece, it was about that big around, had kind of a handle on two sides of it. It was an old stumpy looking piece and I thought I'm, I think that a whole thing will fit on my front fire. I picked it up, walked across the kitchen, across the living room, got down and tossed it on my fireplace. I sat down in a recliner, vinyl recliner we had next to the fireplace. Kicked my feet up and began to read a book, I think it was. It began to burn. It wasn't long until it was getting my attention. I couldn't keep my eyes on what I was doing. I reached down and felt the side of the vinyl chair I was sitting in and it was so hot I couldn't hold my hand. I got up and moved it back away from the fireplace and went across the room and sat on the couch. <laughs> across the room. It was so warm across the room. I, I was uncomfortable. I couldn't sit there. I looked down at the floor right in front of the fireplace. There was a hearth about 12 inches right at floor level, brick. And then there were 12-inch tiles, the old asbestos-looking tile. And I looked over in front of the fireplace, and that fireplace was just nothing but fire. I mean, it was flaming, blazing hot. And the tile in front of the fireplace was doing like this. <laughs> I got down and kind of turned my head and reached over and felt the tile in front of the fireplace and it was so hot it scared me. I raised my eyes and looked at the fire right above the fireplace opening at the brick. The fire was so hot the brick were separated. <laughs> The mortar joints going up like this. I could look through the mortar joints and see fire going up the chimney. I thought I'm fixing to burn up my first parsonage. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do. It wasn't long until we were opening windows to let the heat out. It burned. It raged. If it had started the house on fire, it would have been burnt to the ground before a fire truck could have gotten there. Finally, it began to burn down, and, and it was a bed of coals, probably 15 inches deep at the back of that fireplace, just seething orange hot, so hot, you couldn't still stand in front of it. I had laid aside everything else, and I was watching fire full time. <laughs> it finally began to burn down. The ash kind of turned white grayish on top. And still real, real hot. It kept burning down a little more, a little more. We went to bed that night. Of course, I didn't need any more fire on the fireplace. Wood on the fireplace. 
The next morning, I went to the fireplace to check it, and I could still feel the heat held there by the, the brick that lined the fireplace. But you know, the, before that day was over, that fire had cooled down. I didn't do it, but had I chosen to, I could have reached into the fire and got that ash with my bare hands, reached into the fireplace with my bare hands and cleaned out the ash. You know why? Real simple. I quit putting wood on the fire. You know, friends, I have a deep, deep concern. Yes, yes, yes. A deep, deep concern. And we add fuel to our spiritual fires frequently enough to not let them go out. Friend, you're going out every day, every week in a, into a cold, cold world. And in that atmosphere, it's real easy for your spiritual life to burn low and your spiritual fire in your soul to, to burn low. And that's why you need to add fuel to your spiritual fire right here. Do it in your devotions. Do it coming to church faithfully. Don't miss church. Do it coming to camp meeting services this, this month. Do it to come on Wednesday night. You need to add to your spiritual fire, lest it go out. Oh God, in the heavens, to keep our fires burning. You feel a little dry in your soul? You need God to come down. You need. You feel a little critical and offended in your heart? You need God to come down. You feel drawn to this world? You need God to rend the heavens and warm your heart yes, from heaven. Right. Yes. Yes. There's a spirit of expectancy when God comes down. That's right. yes. Oh, there's nothing that will lift our spirits in a world that's gone mad quite like God rending the heavens and touching us with freshness from heaven. Yes. I challenge you every once in a while to stop where you are and spend some time cultivating the presence of God in your heart until he warms your spirit and satisfies your soul. The impossible gets done. Misunderstandings disappear when God comes down. Oh, that thou wilt rend the heavens. You say, how can it happen? It must start with a desperation, an earnest heart, an earnest cry, a desperate prayer. Oh God, touch my heart. It must involve surrender. Did you see it in verse 8? We are the clay, you're the potter. A little song that children sang several times this morning is so very important. Yes to whatever you say. Yes, before I even know the question, my answer is yes. It must involve surrender. It must involve <clears throat> obedience, verse 5. We must work righteousness, God says. And when we do, God will come back. So my message to you this first night of camp meeting emphasis is, Oh God, yes. would you bring the heavens yes. come down? Yes. You know, over my years of ministry, I've come to this conclusion. There is no problem. There is no problem that the answer isn't God coming down. Right. Touching us from another world. Whatever spiritual struggle, whatever issue the church faces, whatever issue the world faces in our society, the answer is God really the The good news is we're not asking a reluctant God to come down. We're not trying to convince God who doesn't want to do it. No. He 
He says he's waiting to be gracious. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard what he has prepared for them that wait for him. He said, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. I will pour floods upon the dry ground. So my, my prayer to you and my message to you tonight is this can't be any month. Let's cultivate the presence of God. Yes. 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 I want these kids to know you can cultivate the presence of God. You say, Jesus, I want you to be real in my heart. I want to hear your voice. I'm listening. If you're not clear in saving grace or sanctifying, that's the way to become clear. I want to hear your voice. I want you to come down and meet my heart. Parents, don't let it go very long until God has melted your heart somewhere. And as a church, we want Him, don't we? Yes, I know I feel this way, and I know Andrew does as well. We don't have anything to offer, but He. We don't have any answers. We don't have anything to give a word to him. But we do have that. Oh, the power is for the plans. I want us to stand together. I'm going to ask Andrew to come and pray from here at the pulpit to close us. But in this closing prayer, I. Here's what I would like to do. I would like for there to be a, just one big altar right here to Until everybody here would be making an altar inside that says, Oh God, come to my heart in a fresh way. Melt my heart. Warm my heart. Help me to sense your presence. Help me to know your best. Amen. Could you do that? Andrew, come and lead us in the book. Before we pray together, can we lift this spirit of the living God?
bow in your presence tonight. We thank you for the truth that Brother Stepher has shared with us tonight. An Old Testament prophet had prayed this prayer. But it's with such current emphasis today, current applications, in our heart tonight echoes the sentiment of that divine prophet. Oh God, would you rend the heavens? Would you tear open the heavens? And would you come down and do your work? Oh Lord, we recognize tonight that we need you. We recognize that the day is difficult and we recognize the day is dark and we recognize that society is decaying. We recognize that the foundations are crumbling. But oh God, in the midst of difficult circumstances, you've always been a God who's done your work and you stepped in the midst. And so Lord, our hearts echo the sentiment of that divine prophet. Oh God, would you rid the heavens and come down? Oh Lord, we, we confess that sometimes as as another prophet prophesied in the in Ezekiel in that, that 37th chapter, and the Lord would say to the prophet, Can these bones live again? And the prophet said, Oh Lord, you're the only one that knows. <laughs> but Lord, we're so grateful that you there was a stirring and the spirit was blown across them, and a mighty moving took place, and an army was raised to its feet. And so, Lord, we recognize that there's dryness. We recognize there's deadness. We recognize the difficulties. But, oh, God, our prayer tonight, our prayer tonight for our own heart, our prayer for this congregation, our prayer for our movement, our prayer for the greater evangelical world, oh, God, would you rend the heavens? Would you come down and, Lord, as was in the service, change begins to happen when you come down. And so, Lord, it's our prayer, it's our desire, it's our earnest plea that, oh God, that you would do your work. In the midst of years, in wrath, remember mercy, another prophet said, oh God, we need your help and we long for your touch. We're asking you to do your work. You know every heart. You know every need. You know every circumstance. But Lord, you are the answer. And you coming down makes all of the difference. And so, Lord, we're asking that you would do your work. Oh, Lord, we know that uh, we are not really in camp meeting. But we get up tomorrow and, and we go to different places of employment. And, and we have several things scheduled this week. And we're going to go through all of the things that our calendar set for us. But Lord, in the midst of it all, would you come down? Oh God, would you do your work? Would you do your work in our children and our young people and in our young adults and our middle-aged and those that are elderly? Oh God, we're asking that you would do your work. We're trusting you to do it. We don't know every need. We don't know every circumstance, but we have great confidence that you do know and you know how to help and you know how to bring help and victory. And so, Lord, we commit it to you tonight, our confidence, our faith. It is in you tonight. And so, Lord, we commit it to you. We commit it all to you. Oh, God, I pray that there would be deep in our hearts, in each of our hearts, a commitment to the next step, whatever that looks like in our individual lives, whatever you show that to us as you as you make your will known to us, as you light our path. Oh, may there be a deep, settled commitment to doing the next thing and taking the next step. Oh, Lord, we know that you're, you're in the business of getting us all the way to heaven. And so, Lord, you know my next step, and you know their next step, and you know their next step. And, oh, God, I pray that there will be a deep commitment in our lives to say, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. We 
we ask you to accomplish these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. We're trusting you. Our faith is in you. Our desire is for you to step down and step into our midst and do what only you can do. We're trusting you to do that. We thank you and give you praise for all that you do for us. We'll not fail to thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Stepner, for unburdening your heart tonight. Thank you for that wonderful challenge. Let's take it to heart and let's let's collectively seek the Lord that He would come down and do His work in our midst. Thank you for being here, being here tonight. The Lord bless you. Trust you have a wonderful week. Let's make Jesus visible to a lost world. You are dismissed.